That day, a cold chill ran down my spine. I just had to do something. And I was taught that uh, when you become of age and you got drafted, you had to go as your duty. When I heard President Kennedy say, that's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, that was motivating to me. That's why I tried to join the service, because I was doing something for my country. Dad told me, he's like, look, there will come a day you'll have to go serve, and you'll experience and see things that you'll never forget. happened, really kind of thought that we as a country were pretty much untouchable. And our uh, battalion commander telling us that, look, boys, from this day forward, our world has changed, and we need to be ready for it. There wasn't a feeling of revenge. It was more of a feeling of, let's go out there and stop this so this doesn't happen again on our own soil. I didn't expect Afghanistan to be what it was when I got off the helicopter. I asked where the base was and they just pointed up. And... Straight up and down on every single side and every single place you're gonna fight, you are at the bottom and they are at the top. After first actual combat, watching somebody get hit became very real very quickly. We weren't prepared for the chaos that we saw on the beach that day. They went up. They got cut to pieces trying to get up there. When they got back down, we knew it was our turn. We knew that we were eventually going to be attacked. We could see it was a major offensive. No help was coming and things were really bad. All the hell broke loose, probably in the area of 100 automatic weapons. They're in the wood line and they're in trees and they're, they're hitting people before they can get off the aircraft. They come in, boom, and then you hear it, and when it hit the water, you hear it just sizzle. Every single inch of the air in front of us, behind us, was filled with tracers. Within the first five seconds, I think pretty much everyone had been shot somewhere. I could see all these young Marines' eyes looking at me, and they're saying, okay, Lieutenant, what the hell are we gonna do? My biggest fear was that they were gonna converge on us around the corners and finish us off. As I turned around to check on my guys, and right there within arm's reach was a hand grenade. I looked at that grenade and I looked at the guys behind it, and those were my guys, the guys I was responsible for. I looked at them no different than I look at my children. I reached over and picked it up. Right as I opened my hand to release it, it exploded. I came out, and there was two guys carrying one. I just started shooting the best I could while I was still running, trying to close the distance. I grabbed Brennan and I just turned around and ran as fast as I could back the way I just came from. I basically remember having a very quick thought process of, well, screw it, I'm gonna go get him. I remember getting up and running to him, but right as I did that, it seemed like everybody in the valley was shooting at me. I'd wait for the fire to kind of die down, run back out, drag him some more, and I repeated that, you know, a couple times until I got him back to our area. I wasn't going to sit there and see my troopers go. If we went, we are going together. I had two U.S. service members that needed my help. 
That was my fight. We discovered we loved each other, that we were all we had. It's a brotherhood. And you become part of each other, you become like a family. You go in together and you, you come out together. That's the way it is. The assistant division commanders took out his hand and shake hands and I want to congratulate you. I asked him, what for? He says, uh, Sergeant Patterson, you're going to Washington, D.C. And I looked at him and I says, I ain't going to Washington, D.C. I ain't got no damn reason to go up there. He says, oh yeah, you do. Being a Medal of Honor recipient is something that you never even dream of. It's just overwhelming. It just at first it's it's disbelief. What I did is not heroic. I was just an average soldier. That was my job. In the front row I had my family. The row behind my folks was Brennan's family. And next to them was Mendoza's family. I felt the weight of the sacrifices of those two men. Every once in a while, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about the guys. I think of 19 souls that gave their all for it. If not for them, I probably wouldn't be here myself. Every time I look at it, I just see their faces. I'm wearing this medal for the 400 and some people that died in those four days. I'm their representative. And while I got this right arm, and I got all this real estate of empty arm. And so that's the way I looked at it and I said, what better way to remember my fallen comrades? And so it's become a living memorial for me. They gave their life for me. This medal, to me, stands for sacrifice. If there's one thing that we can do to keep the country free, it's to educate the next generation about the importance of service and sacrifice. We have worked very hard to recognize civilians who are true heroes, and also to develop a program that will make heroes out of our young people. Isn't it important for someone to remind us of this special potential that resides within each and every one of us? What a wonderful thing that is for kids to say, I can do that. I can, if, if I have to, I can. You don't have to don a uniform for, for service or sacrifice. I just happened to, to wear one when the actions happened for me that day. It doesn't matter where you're from or, or what you're doing. When you see a need, when you see a challenge, do you sit there and just let it pass you by? Or do you stand up and say, hey, this is the right thing to do, and go do it?